Hello Booktube, hello friends, welcome to Lizzie Pay Loves Books, I'm Elizabeth and today is April 15th so I thought I would do just a quick mid-month wrap up and tell you about the books that I finished so far in April. Now I've only got a little bit of memory left on my phone right now so, well this is my old phone and so I've already tried filming this once and I ran out of time so I'm not going to be able to tell you about what I'm currently reading but once I get this video uploaded if I have time to come back maybe tomorrow I will talk about what I'm currently reading and what I hope to read between now and the end of the month. Uh, I've, as you guys know, coming up very soon on Sunday, the 19th is going to be the start of the Amish in April readathon, which is hosted by myself and Sarah from Steepton Books. That's going to be an eight day readathon, but we've got four days before that and four days after that. And I've got 10 books underway right now and a few others that I'd like to start and finish before the month is out. So I've got lots to talk about. Anyway, I finished 11 books so far this month and I hope to finish another one this evening, a short audio book that I'm listening to right now. So let's just go over what I'm reading so far and it'll just be a mid-month wrap up. So the first book I finished, I don't have a way to edit in a picture, but it's called The Secrets We Kept by Laura Prescott. This is going to be a book club book coming up in a few months, and while I still had my Audible membership, I decided to go ahead and get it because that was the only way I could find it on audio. I listened to it. I didn't love it, so I went ahead and traded it in for something that I really wanted to listen to while I still had my Audible membership, and now I have canceled that at least for now. I may get it again at some point, but... Anyway, that's another that's another video. So, The Secrets We Kept by Laura Prescott is a historical novel based on some true events. Um, it's centered around the book Dr. Shivago, and it's about some secretaries who were spies. And the premise sounds great, but I just didn't love it. it I don't know. It just wasn't really what I hoped it would be. And then I also finished a few things that I had hoped to get done during March Mystery Madness, but I didn't didn't get them done until April. One of them was The Cat Who Had 60 Whiskers by Lillian Jackson Braun. This is the very last Cat Who novel, and sadly, it was sad. It ended on some really negative things that are not going to ever be resolved, and that made it sad, and it just wasn't very good. It kind of bounced around, and I had a hard time following the story and the murder and I am still not even really sure what happened. So I, I didn't love that at all. And it's sad because I love the series, but that one just wasn't very good. Then I also finished shot in the dark by Cleo Coyle. This is the last one I can get on hoopla on audio. And so I did actually get the very most current one. It got sent to me in the mail from the library. It's called brood awakening. And I'm going to have to listen to this one, or no, I'm going to have to read this one in print. I haven't started it yet. I probably won't get to it in April, even though I want to, but I've got so many other things going on right now. But because the library due dates are farther out, I can hang on to it and definitely can get it done by the end of May. Although May is going to be middle grade May and I want to focus on middle grade books. I don't know. I'll just squeeze it in there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> there's a where there's a will there's a way right and then I also finished The Silent Patient by um, Alex Michaelides this was Laura's read-along for March Mystery Madness I didn't get to start it until April something and so I had told her that I was going to try to squeeze it in near the end of March I just got it in the mail from the library just a few days before the uh, the month of March was over, and I just couldn't squeeze it in. I didn't love this. Um, it, it just, I don't know, maybe I just, this type of book, this type of thrillery kind of book, I I have read some that I liked, and but a lot of them just have too much foul language, and I listened to this right after The Lion Game, which was also right after The Girl Before by J.P. Delaney. All three of those were books that were thriller in nature. They all had characters that I couldn't relate to and that I couldn't really get behind and sympathize with. And I just wasn't a fan really of uh, any of them. But if you've never seen a play away, this is a little MP3 player. You can get them from the library and it's just a little handy way of listening to a book that you can carry in your pocket, especially while your phone is charging. You can carry that around and uh, it's pretty cool. Then I also listened to 
Scandal in Skyberine. This is book two in the County Cork series by Sheila Conley. I had listened to Buried in a Bog in late February for our March book club, and then uh, I listened to this one in early April. So neither of these Irish books did I get read in the month of March. I had I thought I could at least get do one of them in March, but it's okay. Anyway, um, it's okay. The series is pretty good. I'm not a fan of the narrator. Uh, the narrator is Amy Rubinate, and she just has a quality about her voice that I I don't click with, and I. I feel like she makes the main character sound really rude. And everybody I've talked to who has read Buried in a Bog said, sorry, I just dropped it. I'm not going to pick it up. But anyway, um, they have said, the people I know have read this in print. And they said, oh, well, the main character didn't seem rude to me. And I said, well, it must just be the narrator. And that's just my opinion. You know, you may love the narrator, but that's just kind of how I perceived it. And then I also, lit, oh, some books that I loved were by Thomas Perry. I actually finished a series by Thomas Perry. It's the Jane Whitefield series, and now I'm interested in reading or listening to other books by him. I listened to book five during March Mystery Madness, even though they're not really mysteries, they're more kind of suspense thrillers, but with much less foul language than your average thriller of today's world. Uh, and these are not very, these are modern. They're not old, but they're just so good. Uh, for April, I've already listened to three of these now, and I have finished the series at least um, up to date. I hope he writes some more. I may go back and read them again because they're so good. Anyway, I listened to Runner, and then I also listened to Poison Flower. And then just last night, I finished the eighth book, A String of Beads. And uh, Jane Whitefield is a Native American woman from upstate New York, and she helps people disappear who are maybe in danger, the type of danger that police can't help. Maybe even the police are after them, but they're innocent, or maybe they're not innocent. I don't know. She helps people disappear, and it's just amazing what she does. She's so smart, and all these things that she thinks about. It's like, wow, how, how did the author even think of all those things to write, um, you know, to write into the character? Um, then also I listened to a really fun little book by Tanya Kappas. This is from the criminal, I think it's Criminals and Cozies or Cozies and Criminals, Criminals and Campgrounds, um, Cozy Mystery Series by Tanya Kappas. I had listened to the first one maybe a year ago with Sarah. She did her read along uh, of the first book of this series. And so I had thought maybe I would get to one of these during March Mystery Madness and I didn't. This uh, book two in the series is called, I'm going to put my glasses on. It's called, I think, Deserts, Driving, and Derelicts. Each of the books has this really cute little camper on the cover. It's so cute. And then currently right now, the book I plan to finish today is Forests, Fishing, and Forgery. That's what I'm listening to right now. Also today, I finished a book for Book Club, The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. This is a nonfiction book about women working with radium who were painting clock dials and didn't know that radium was poison and radioactive and their bodies just started disintegrating. It's such a sad story. Really, really sad. Um, okay, so I think that's everything that I have finished. Oh, uh, did I mention... I think I didn't mention this one. <laughs> I picked this up from the... Uh, bookmobile the last time I was there, the last time I was able to go before all of the virus shut everything down, he had a little display of tiny books. And so I recognize this author, Carl Heisen, who is a Florida author. It's called Assume the Worst, the Graduation Speech You'll Never Hear. And it's got illustrations by Roz Cast or Chast. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I... <laughs> I wasn't shocked by this book. Carl Heisen is really pretty cynical, and I assumed from the title that this was going to be one of those types of books. I just wish he could have done it with a lot less foul language. It would have been a lot more entertaining for me. The sentiment that he's trying to get across is not wrong. He's basically trying to give people a wake-up call that 
you know, it's not all going to be a bed of roses once you get out in the real world. But, you know, he puts his spin on things, which can be funny, but it's a little over the top and too much foul language. So, anyway, that's my take on it. So, I think that's everything that I have finished. Um, I am going to go ahead and stop here. So, I was looking to see. I'm at about 10-something uh, minutes right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I am reading 10 books right now and hope to finish most of those before Amish in April starts. I've got a couple of other books that I want to try to start and finish on audio either before Amish in April or after. And um, I'm doing a two buddy reads right now, one with my sister, and we are reading the um, A Hearth in Candlewood by Delia Parr. This is the first in a trilogy. I'm also reading the first in another trilogy with Donna from Paradonna Palimpsest. You may be familiar with her. She may uh, comment to your videos. And um, her and I are reading These Is My Words by Nancy, is it Nancy Turner? It's a diary book, uh, uh, like it's the diary of Sarah Agnes Prine. And it is set in Arizona, which is where Donna is from. And so she really knows that area where it's set. And uh, so it's really neat for me to be able to read that with her because she's telling me about the area and some of the history and things as we go along. And so we're uh, on track to finish that up just before Amish and April starts. So that's it. That's about all for this video. I may come back and do a currently reading video or I might just, um, I don't know, maybe do a Friday reads. I don't know. That's all for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book. <laughs> Hi, Emily. Read a good book and God bless you.